Three bet pots are one of the most difficult spots that you will encounter. I know this because you all tell me in the comment section down below and you all mess up three bet pots a lot. And to be fair, pretty much every poker player messes up three bet pots. So in this video, we are going to be discussing how to master the fundamentals of three bet pots so that you do not horribly mess up these situations that do come up at the poker table where you often have to play for a lot of your chips. So first things first, understand that ranges are very different in three bet pots compared to single raise pots because presumably the three better, the re-raiser is going to have something decent and the caller is gonna fold out all of their junk. So that generally makes ranges a little bit stronger. However, the caller of the three bet will often be lacking the absolute best hands like kings, queens, ace, king because they would have four bet those, right? So typically the three better is going to have a little bit of a range advantage in most scenarios. Also, strategies are going to vary substantially based on stack depth. We're going to take a look at a few examples of that very, very soon. To further complicate things, your opponents will likely not use the GTO strategy. A lot of people have not studied three bet pots, and even if they have, they're chickens. They're afraid to three bet with bluffs. Most people in all scenarios lack three bet bluffs. And that's especially true from out of position because a lot of the bluffs feel a little bit icky to three bet. Also, many players lack the somewhat loose calls that you need to be making against three bets, especially when you're deep stacked and especially from in position. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a bunch of preflop scenarios using the poker coaching app to illustrate that ranges are very different compared to single race pots and also that strategies vary a lot by stack depth. And then we're going to go through a scenario where we are 60 big blinds deep, where we raise the button, the small blind three bets, we call, and then we go to the flop on a few, well, one flop and then various turns. Okay? There's going to be a lot in this video. Hang with me. You are going to learn a lot. So here we have the poker coaching app. You can go download this right now. We click on GTO tournament charts, 60 big blinds deep. That's where we're going to start. And first I want to look at the button versus a raise from under the gun. So here is what you're gonna do on the button when the under the gun first position player raises eight handed. Notice, we're only three betting aces, kings, queens, and ace, king for value. You're not three betting ace, queen suited. You're barely three betting jacks. You're not three betting tens. Nines doesn't really love it. All the small pairs don't love it. And then we're three betting with a decent amount of bluffs with Almost all of our bluffs coming from ace x suited, king x suited, and offsuit high cards, plus a few other hands like suited connected type stuff like queen nine suited, queen eight suited, and seven six suited. So we're really not three betting all that much at all because the initial raiser's range should be very strong because they're raising under the gun, 60 big blinds deep. If your opponent's raising much wider preflop, then sure, you can get a little bit farther out of line and you can three bet wider. But against a good strong GTO opening range, which I guess I'll show you, Here's a good, strong GTO under the gun opening range. As you see, just a lot of good hands. Hands in red, by the way, are the aggressive action. The hands in green are called. Hands in gray slash blue are folded. Um, so as you see here, if they're raising very strong, you really just don't get to do a whole lot. So let's go back to button versus raise from under the gun. What I want to look at now is what happens when we're a little bit shallower stacked. Let's take a look what happens when we are 40 big blinds deep. Notice now, our three bets are going to change just a little bit, and our value range, the three betting get it in, is also going to be slightly different, but still mostly the same selection of hands, but a little bit wider with the pairs. So we should go back to 60 big blinds, and I'll show you what you do versus a four bet all in. You call it off with only the pair um, pocket nines and better an ace king. Notice that even ace queen folds. And against a normal four bet, we are, again, just putting it in with the best hands and folding all the bluffs for the most part. Okay? So we're not like getting it in with the ace-queen offsuit here. I want to make that very clear. So many people torch their money with ace-queen offsuit, myself included in the past. All right, let's go back to 40 big blinds. Uh, button versus raise from under the gun. And you see, you know, similar selection of hands. Aces, kings, queens, some jacks, a little bit more tens, etc., and ace-king. And now versus a four bet all-in, we would again call it off with the same range, ace-king and all the pairs. Again, notice all of the other hands are folding out. But notice a similar selection of hands are still opting to three bet, right? Suited connected type stuff, ace x suited, king x suited, all suit big cards. It's going to be a very, very common pattern. What happens if we get really shallow stack now, like 20 big blinds? 
Well, 20 big blinds deep, you can't really three bet and then fold to a shove because you'll be getting pretty good pot odds. Let's say your opponent makes it two, you make it five, they go all in for 20. Now at this point, you have to call 15 more to try to win 42 and a half. So you need to win what, like 35% of the time? Almost everything is gonna win 35% of the time on average. So you can't really three bet small at 20 big blinds deep and then fold. So you're just gonna shove it all in with all the hands that you want to play. And unlike a deeper stack three betting range that's very polarized where you're three betting the best hands plus some trashy hands, now we're actually calling some of the best hands because they're so good. And we're three betting a much more condensed range of hands that just have very, very good value that may or may not flop especially well. So it's usually gonna be pairs, decent suited high cards, and some ace X type hands, the good ones for the most part, plus low suited ace X. All right, now let's discuss what under the gun should do versus a three bet from the button. Uh, let's look at 60 big blinds deep. So 60 big blinds deep, you'll see that from out of position, you do actually a decent amount of four betting, although maybe not as much as you may think. This is the thing, a lot of people just have no clue what to do in in three bet pots. You'll see here the hands that four bet are literally only aces, kings, queens, ace, king, and then a few suited ace x blockers like ace four suited and ace three suited plus a little bit of king nine suited here, tiny bet. And then we're calling everything else we want to continue, but our calling range is actually pretty tight. Notice we're only calling the best suited aces, good suited connected hands, pairs, and ace queen offsuit. King queen offsuit cannot play. Ace jack offsuit cannot play. You have to be very cautious when someone three bets you when you are out of position playing deep stacked. Let's take a look at 40 big blinds deep. It's gonna be a similar thing, except for now we're gonna be shoving more often from out of position because we're shallow to the point that we can't really three bet and then fold. Let's go back to this actually. 60 big blinds deep versus five bet all in. You see you call it off the best hands, fold the bluffs, right? Pretty obvious. Um, but I just wanted to show you to be clear. Notice when we're 40 big blinds deep under the gun versus a three bet, now you are gonna be shoving because you if they, you make it two, they make it five or five and a half. You can't really make it 12 and fold to a shove because again, you're getting very good pot odds. So because you're getting very good pot odds, you'd rather not have small three bets that fold or small four bets that fold to the shove because when you four bet small, you give your opponent good odds to call with whatever hands are getting that correct price that they happen to be bluffing with, which is not really ideal. So we now see we're just jamming the best hands plus some bluffs with the ace X suited. 20 big blinds deep strategy is going to be very different because now we're going to be facing a three bet all in, 20 big blinds under the gun versus three bet all in from the button. We Now we just call off with the best hands. Pretty logical stuff. Okay. That is when we are on the, or we're looking at the scenario where it's under the gun versus a button raiser. Now let's quickly now go through button versus a raise from the cutoff. So now the cutoff's range to raise with is gonna be substantially wider, right? And for that reason, we're gonna be three betting much wider and getting it in much wider. Notice now we're three betting far more pairs, 60 big blinds deep on the button versus a raise from the cutoff, right? Three betting more pairs, lots of suited aces, lots of suited kings, more suited connectors, and more offsuit big cards. This is a very common spot that's gonna come up a lot and most people do not three bet nearly often enough with hands in this region, the offsuit high cards, and a lot of this suited connected junk. People just fold or they call. I mean, ask yourself, seriously, if the cutoff raises, are you continuing with the king five suited every time, either by three betting or calling? Most people say, no way, king five suited is bad. It's actually pretty good. It's a great three betting hand and you need to be getting after it. The best players in the world take these spots every single time and that results in them being way more difficult to play against and they are scooping up little bits of equity that you probably are not. Now let's take a look at 40 big blinds deep. It's gonna be somewhat similar, but um, the bluffs are gonna come a little bit more from the offsuit high card stuff, as we see here. Although we are still three betting some suited connected type junk. Notice the ace suited actually three bets less often now. And that's because you don't really want to three bet ace three suited enough to fold it to a shove. If we do get shoved on, by the way, you'll see we are folding all of the garbage and just calling off all the good hands, right? Common stuff, common, common, scenario, whenever you do get shoved on, you just call off the good hands, fold the trash. And that's a big benefit of three betting very polarized. Uh, what, a lot, what a lot of people do wrong, by the way, is they just three bet all the best hands, like ace jack, ace queen, ace 10 suited, ace nine suited, king queen suited, king queen off suit. And then they fold out too much of that. But you don't really want to be three betting ace 10 suited and have thing to fold it to a shove because it actually has really good value. You'd much rather call and see the flop. Also notice 40 big blinds deep, same story, ace queen off suit. You really don't want to three bet fold ace queen off suit. So don't three bet it. Call and see the flop. Same thing for ace-jack offsuit. These hands flop really well. 
uh, 20 big blinds deep. Now we're going to be shoving or calling or folding. And again, we are shoving a much more condensed type range where we're not shoving the absolute best hands and we're not shoving the hands on the bottom of the range. Instead, we're shoving the hands in the middle of the range that have good equity in the spot. Let's look now at cutoff versus a three bet from the button. Okay. I realize there's a little bit to this video. There's a lot to three bet pots and we're only going to halfway cover it. We're going to do our best though to give you lots of good actionable information. Notice now, 60 big blinds deep, cutoff versus a three bet from the button. Notice now, lots more calls. We have lots more calls compared to when we were against the under the gun player because we are now against a much wider range. When you're against a much wider range, you have to call substantially more often. Notice we do have a few all ends with tens and nines and ace four suited and fives and ace king offsuit 60 big blinds deep. I would tell you to not worry about those so much. Um, it's a relatively small portion of your range. So I would call or four bet small with lots of these. If you do four bet and you get five bet all in, obviously call off the best hands, fold everything else. You do have to call it off with the ace queen reluctantly here. But notice the ace queen. I mean, it, it's in your range, don't get me wrong. So you are going to be four betting it, but it's not like it's a ton of your range in the spot. But at that point, you're going to be getting good enough odds to put it in. Because remember, if you make it two, they make it six. You make it 16, they go all in for 60. You have to call 45 to win 120. You got to win 30 something percent, right? And ace queen apparently will. 40 big blind Z. You're now not going to have a small four bet range because now, remember, if you make it two, they make it five and a half. You make it 14. If they shove, you have to put in 26 more to try to win 80. Now you're getting amazing odds. So now you're going to be shoving that condensed type range. And same thing goes if we're playing 20 big blinds deep, although your opponent won't have the small three bets in the spot anyway, or not, not that often at all. Okay. One more preflop spot I want to look at that's very important. I want to look at small blind versus a raise from the button. Now, 60 big blinds deep, button raises, we are in the small blind, okay? This is where a lot of people really screw up, and we're going to be discussing a post-flop spot about this exact scenario today. In this scenario, notice we are 3-betting a much more linear range across the board, now with our bluffs coming from hands that have very good post-flop playability. Because you should expect to get called a lot by the in-position player. So if you're expecting to get called a lot by the in-position player, in the scenario of the button, you're going to be 3-betting your best hands, a lot of suited aces, a lot of suited kings, lots of high cards, and lots of medium suited connectors to give you very good board coverage. If you only 3-bet the best hands, and no suited connected type stuff, the middle card boards are going to be really bad for you. And you do not want to have spots where any board is really, really bad for you. If the board comes low cards, you have a lot of over pairs and draws to the top end of the straight. If it comes medium cards, we have a lot of these hands in this region, which is fine. If it comes big cards, obviously we have the best hands. So this is a spot a lot of people screw up. Um, 40 big blinds deep, we will start to have some all ins. A lot of people hate to have all ins 40 big blinds deep against the min raise on the button. But you do see you should be shoving, again, that very condensed range. However, we still have a three betting range, small, like seven big blinds, with a very um, polarized range with our absolute best hands that we're getting in, plus some bluffs, mostly from the ace X offsuit and offsuit high card hands. If we do get four bet all in, by the way, you'll see you just call it off the best hands, fold everything else. Notice ace eight suited and ace 10 offsuit are good enough to call, king jack suited. So you, you can't be too nitty whenever you get shoved in this spot. A lot of people are too nitty. They hate busting, and that's, that's a big problem for them. And uh, 20 big blinds deep versus a raise from the button you're mostly jamming because at this point you don't really want to three bet and then fold to a shove, right? And also you don't have much of a calling range because winning the pot preflop is very valuable at the stack depth and playing out of position is going to be tough. Let's very quickly look at button versus three bet from small blind, 60 big blinds deep. I can already tell you, you're going to call a lot, probably more than you want to. And take a look at this. Take a look at this. Small blind. I know we're 14 minutes into the video. <laughs> small blind. In this scenario, I'm, uh, small blind in this scenario is three betting a lot of medium strength stuff, right? So that forces the button to call very, very wide. They're actually calling with a lot of their preflop raising range, really only folding out the junkier offsuit hands and the junky suited hands. 60 big blinds deep, we do have a few four bets, but not a whole lot, right? We're really only four betting with the absolute best hands plus a few trashy blocker bluffs. There are a few shoves here as well. Maybe you want to have those, maybe you don't. You probably do. 40 big blinds deep, it's going to be a similar enough strategy, but more shoves. And again, the shoves are going to be very condensed. Notice that we're still calling very wide, like jack eight suited every time, king four suited, five four suited, ace eight offsuit. Feels dicey. Now look, if your opponents are not three betting nearly often enough from the small blind, 
you should be folding a lot of these hands that GTO is recommending to call. But if you're playing against good, strong opponents, you got to get in there and battle. 20 big blinds deep now, we are calling way less often, and we're just going to be jamming. But again, the opponent's not going to have very many small three bets in this scenario. Okay, that's a lot. That could, probably could have been one video. If you like going through lots of scenarios that are very common, I actually have a new book for you. 100 Essential Tips to Master No Limit Hold'em. We'll put a link in the video in the description down below. We go through lots of common spots you're going to be in. We discuss all sorts of things. Trap maniacs on the flop. Facing a flop raise, right? We go through all sorts of scenarios. Developing strong heuristics. You need a lot of heuristics like we're discussing here. Three bet polarize when you're deep stacked, right? Ranges change at different stack depth. We're literally talking about that right now. This is a great book. I worked very hard on it. It's a relatively easy read because all the chapters are like two or three pages. So you can sit down, read for two or three minutes, or sit down and read the whole book in one sitting. Doesn't make a difference to me. 100 Essential Tips to Master and Illuminate Hold'em. You can buy it now. We'll put links in the description below to get it on Amazon or DNB Poker. Now, let's get to a post-flop scenario. We are going to look at specifically Button versus a small blind three bet, 60 big blinds deep, okay? We literally just looked at this chart, so we don't need to go through it. Small blinds three betting this, lots of suited connected hands, lots of ace X suited, king X suited, etc. Button is gonna defend with this. All these hands in green are calling, okay? So what I wanna do now is I want to look at what the small blind should do on ace, queen, seven. Okay, button raises 60 big blinds deep, Small blind three bets, like eight or nine big blinds, whatever. Button calls, flop comes ace, queen, seven. All right, this flop should be quite good for the small blind. Why should it be good for the small blind? Well, small blind has all these aces, right? Notice, if the button's good, they actually have a decent amount of aces too. A lot of people four bet ace jack suited, ace, queen, offsuit, aces every time, right? So that does make their range a little bit weaker here. Typically though, when you have a big range advantage, but not like a huge nut advantage, because both players do have a lot of good hands on this flop. Lots of aces, right? That's effectively the nuts of the stack depth. You're going to do a decent amount of tiny betting. In this scenario, the GTO bet sizes we offered were all over the place, but it seems like the solver picked either 25% pot, really small, 4.9 big blinds, or huge pot for 19.6 big blinds. Uh, the dark red is pot. The light red is small bet. And there are some checks smat uh, in this range as well. So which hands want to bet really big? That's going to be hands that are almost always good but vulnerable. Ace-King. And then some bluffs. Turns out the bluffs here it really likes are backdoor straight flush draws. Really trashy bluffs. Could you imagine being 60 big blinds deep, just potting it on the flop with the 10-9 of diamonds? Woo! Feels, feels fun. It'll make you feel alive. All right. All the, all the other hands are betting small, and our betting range in general is going to be somewhat polarized. If you take a look at the range, the hands that are really not betting a lot, are the hands that have a little bit of showdown value, like uh, King X suited, right? Like notice King H suited is not betting a lot. If it checks down, it could actually win, right? Um, and that's usually what you're gonna see. Also, we have some weak ace X doing a decent amount of checking, which makes some sense. Also some queens doing some checking, which also makes some sense, right? The medium is strength hands. Whereas a hand like Ace Jack and Ace Queen and Ace King are betting almost every time. All right, what should the button do against a bet of 4.9 big blinds. Well, they should not fold much at all. Also, because this board actually does favor the initial raiser a decent amount, you also don't get to raise all that much at all. So take a look at what's folding. In this scenario, what is folding is literally only king high, jack high, 10 high, nine high, and some eight high. <laughs> also under pairs are folding sometimes, sixes and fives are folding sometimes. But notice, you have to call a ton, and that's because you're getting really good odds. A lot of people in this spot fold out hands like pocket jacks every time. They just ditch them. They just put them right in the muck. They go, oh, jacks are in bad shape. i got to fold. But no, 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 no. Facing a 4.9, 25% pot bet, you have to continue incredibly wide. Notice our raising range includes jacks 10, or I'm sorry, ace jack, ace 10, ace 9, and then a few nonsense bluffs. These raises are small raises, by the way. They are not all in. These are going to be to like... 2.3 times the opponent's bet. Um, so we're raising very polarized again, hands that can easily get it in. Ace jack, ace 10, ace nine. You are raising and getting those in. And then you're raising the absolute garbage down here with the intention of folding to a shove. What about against a big bet, a pot size bet? Now you get to fold a ton. 
because now you're getting way worse odds. In this spot, you plan to call with all your ace-x and all your queen-x and some of your nine-x, I'm sorry, some of your seven-x on the flop, and then you're going to fold out the seven-x and some of the queen-x to a turn bet, and then you're going to fold out all of it except for the ace-x to a river shove, okay? If the opponent does rip it all in on the turn, you're going to call it off with, again, all the ace-x and some of the queen-x. So... This is a rather interesting scenario where a lot of people, they get really, really scared and they have a hand like ace two and they just fold. Or they have a hand like king queen and they just fold. But as you can see here, that's not what you're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do if they check? We saw that happening about 20% of the time. Anytime you're checked to in three bet pots, you're going to find that you usually want to be betting somewhat polarized, just with your best hands and some trash. And as we see here, lots of ace is betting, a little bit of queen X, but not a lot. And then... Some real junkers, 6-5 suited, 5-4 suited, 5s, 4s, 10-8 suited, 10-9 suited, jack-9 suited, right? All these hands that are pretty bad are going for the bluff. Also, king-6 and king-5 are bluffing a lot in this scenario. So when you're checked to, you are usually be betting pretty polarized. All right, let's consider now. Flop comes ace-queen-7, small blind bets 4.9 big blinds, button calls, turns of three of clubs. Now what? When you bet somewhat frequently on the flop, as is the case for the small blind in this scenario, you cannot bet every single time on the turn, unless the turn's extremely good for your range. But remember, these ranges are kind of lined up on top of each other where the button should have a lot of ace X. So no turn's gonna be particularly amazing for the small blind. So for that reason, small blind's gonna have to check somewhere between like 40% and 60% of the time, give or take. So now, in this scenario, the small blind is going to have Two bet sizes at this point, 7.3 big blinds or 17.6 big blinds, about a third pot or two thirds pot, something like that. When you do have two bet sizes, you're usually going to have the big bet size being very polarized and the small bet size being a little bit more condensed. And if we go through here, we will see that. Now, look, for practical purposes, maybe you just want to use only one big bet size and not bet hands so much like uh, jack seven or queen jack or king queen, right? These hands are often using the small bet size, like pocket kings, right? That uses the small bet size almost every time. And maybe you want to bet a little bit more polarized. So bet a little bit less often, but more polarized with just good ace X and some draws, right? Notice um, like six, five suit is loving it here. Just turned a gut shot. Oh yes, we're going for it. And that is going for a big bet. It's going to put the opponent in a nasty spot, right? But also we're betting with lots of good hands. Take a look at the hands that mostly check. Lots of sevens check, lots of queens check, some weak ace x checks, pocket pairs check. That makes a whole lot of sense, right? Once we bet the flop very wide, we have to bet the turn very polarized in general. What does the button do when check to? The button, when check to, now also has to bet polarized. Notice that they're actually going very polar in this scenario. Because if you take a look at this range, it's actually still pretty decent. They have aces, they have some ace-x, they have a lot of queens, they have a lot of pairs. And again, they're going to be using a polarized size when they bet, either a two-thirds pot or something like 25% pot or 30% pot bet, which is good ace-x, a few bluffs, a few absolute junkers. Notice fives and fours going for a bluff sometimes, or actually every time. This is something a lot of people do not do, but you need to do it. Because in this scenario, you don't really want to be bet folding a hand like King Jack. King Jack's a pretty good hand in this spot. You don't want to bet it and have to fold it, so you need to find weaker draws to bluff. And the nice thing about fives is that, well, you may spike a five, and then you get to win a nice spot. All right, what about a different turn? Small blind bets 4.9 big blinds. We call. Well, we call. The button calls. Now the turn's a king. This turn's actually way better for the initial raiser. I'm sorry, for the three better in the small blind than for the button because they were just, they had more big cards to begin with, right? So now... We're going to see them continuing to bet, but again, very polarized. And interestingly enough now, there aren't a whole lot of draws in these small blinds range that make logical sense because notice they only have like jack nine suited, jack eight suited, 10 nine suited, 10 eight suited. There are really no other draws here. So when that's the case, you're often going to look for other hands that have additional equity. And what are those? Well, that's going to be a lot of sevens. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive to just blast a 10 seven and the nine seven and the seven six here. But they're essentially a five-out draw. And if your opponent is sitting here with a queen, they're going to be in miserable shape. And even if they have an ace, they're not going to love it. So in this scenario, when we bet 17 big blinds on the turn, two-thirds pot, the button has to call with 
all the ace x, all the king x, and the queen x that has some additional equity, like a gut shot. And then, if we push the river, you have to call off with ace x. But notice, a lot of the king x, well, at least the queen x is going to be folding every time, and some of the king x is going to fold to the river shove. So, this is a spot where I definitely think, if anything, you should perhaps over bluff, because I think a lot of people, if you give them ace 2 here, they're going to... Uh, call the turn bet, and then they're going to fold to a river bet, and that would be a big, big, big mistake. What about... What about... What should the button do on the turn when check to? Again, they're going to be very polarized, right? And when you're very polarized, you're going to be betting just the best hands and some draws. Again, draws are going to come from, because we don't have a whole lot of stuff like jack nine and jack eight in this spot, the bottom pairs and under pairs, okay? What about the turns of seven? This turn seven is actually really good for the button because the button's going to raise and then call the three of it with a lot of hands containing a seven. If we go all the way back up here to this slide, take a look at all these hands containing a seven, right? And yes, the small blind does have some, but not a ton. And in reality, most people don't have even as many as this because they don't three bet them all. So in this spot now, you're going to find that you are going to often err towards the smaller bet size. It is closer to 50-50 in this exact spot where you use a small bet size and a big bet size, but as the turn is better for the opponent, you have to use smaller and smaller sizes. So again, um, because the turn is good for the button, we're going to be betting less often, and we're going to be using smaller sizes in general, although there are still some big sizes being used because we do have some uh, 7x. That said, again, very polarized because we bet the flop almost every time. If the button calls a small bet, well, when they call this, when they face a small bet, they should be calling with all 7x, obviously, um, ace x, queen x, and even some gut shots like king jack against a seven big blind bet in this scenario. Against small bets, you have to continue really wide. Um, in this scenario, facing such a small bet, you also need to raise more often. And in this scenario, against a small bet on the turn, the button should be raising 9x, 8x, and 7x suited ace queen and ace jack just to get it in and then some bluffs and again on this board what are the bluffs well it's going to be jack 10 offsuit pocket fives and pocket fours Ugh, feels bad but can you imagine putting in a small raise in this scenario it's pretty fun if you call the turn and the opponent pushes on the river you call 7x some ace x and um not a whole lot that's about it right actually in this scenario, the small blind should not actually push the river all that often. Very often, they're go for, going to go for a small bet because you have a lot of sevens and they don't. And in that scenario, if they bet small, you get to jam all your 7x and your some of your ace x, your good ace x, maybe even some medium ace x, and some bluffs. But at that point, bluffs again become small pairs. Very odd scenario, but you got to go for it. One more spot. <laughs> I know this has been a long video. Hopefully, you're learning something. If you're learning something, click the like and subscribe button below, please. Also... If you pre-order the book, let me know in the comments section. I appreciate it. I make lots and lots of videos for all of you. Pay me back a little bit. Get the book, learn some more, enjoy yourself. All right, here we have a button win check two on the turn, win check two again, just a polarized betting strategy with lots of 7x, some ace x, some draws, and some junk. So look, we went through one spot today after the flop, in reality, one flop, one pre-flop starting position. You need, in reality, to study how to play when you're out of position, when you're in position, to get with wider ranges, with looser ranges, etc., etc., etc. There is a lot to three bet pots, and today we did discuss the fundamentals. So if you enjoyed this video, again, click the like and subscribe down below. Click the notification bell. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hope you do a little bit better in three bet pots. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching.